Hi everyone, my name is Roz. Welcome to a fresh round of Job Search Bootcamp. For this little mini series next week, we're just going to be talking about how to apply for a job by email, how to write the email, how to address the email, what to attach with the email, and also the email address that you choose to use. So it's not going to be very complicated, but hopefully it's going to be incredibly worthwhile. So please excuse me while I read some stuff and take my eyes away from you. Um, so every day I get to my desk and I have at least 20 or 30 emails waiting for me from people who want us to put them forward for jobs. And I can only assume that they are addressing me and writing the email to me the same way that they would address employers and write an email to employers. So it gives me a pretty good idea of what's happening when people are applying for jobs. Now, if I was a huge recruiter or a major company, I would possibly have more than 100 emails or, or a pile of typed applications on my desk that I have to go through. Now, I can't spend hours and hours every day going through applications. I wouldn't get anything else done. So you have to sift them out somehow. And employers are not sitting there reading these emails and these applications from cover to cover. They are taking 20 seconds they're going to flick over the email if it catches their attention for the right reason they will open the email and hopefully read the cv and of course you're going to have a cv that's been rewritten by me it is going to be short sharp snappy and fabulous oh it's so hot here i'm so sorry so we have to make sure that the email body absolutely grips them so that they want to open the CV. It can't be a long, rambling, narcissistic sermon about how awesome they think they are. It just has to be so short and to the point. And on Monday, we're going to start and we're going to talk about how to write the email that goes along with your CV, how to get the attention of the employer for the right reason. You do not want them to print out your email and put it on the notice board so that they can all laugh about it at morning tea. We don't want that. And so employers are not going to persist trying to read an email that's long and grammatically incorrect with spelling errors and just this whole long thing. They're not going to persist with that. They're just going to shut it down and go to the next one. And then you've lost your opportunity before they've even opened your CV. You have lost your opportunity. So... They want to hire somebody who cares about attention to detail, somebody who is going to make an effort for their company. And this application is the first opportunity that you have to show them what you can do. This is the first task for your employers. So it has to be good and it has to, it has to look professional and it can't contain spelling mistakes or grammatical errors or long words that are used in the wrong place. So, because you have to think, this employer is going to spend thousands of dollars to hire you with the whole relocation thing and everything. They are going to end up spending thousands of dollars. And they are not going to spend thousands of dollars on somebody whose email is just a mess. That's the first impression they have of you and it has to be good. And they want to employ the best of the best of the best. And that starts with the best CV and the best application and the absolute simplest email. So on Monday, 
as I said, we're going to talk about what the email should say, and I'm already at five minutes. So I just want to read you a couple of emails that I've received. These are genuine emails from people, not lying. <laughs> so here we go. Everybody's name is John. It's just going to make it easier. Hi, my name is John, and I'm amazing. No, we don't write that. We don't tell them we're amazing. This is another one I got today, actually. Hello, everyone. Good day and hope you are well. Introduce myself. My full name is John Brown and you can call me John. I'm from the Philippines. I'm married and I have one child. I have many experienced more than 12 years as mechanic in oil field services, gold mine, nickel mine and coal mine. And at that point you've lost the employer because the grammar is incorrect. And I understand that English is not everybody's first language, which is why it's even more important to make sure that your application is 100%. So that's just a couple of examples. I'm going to give you some more on Monday. We're already at six and a half minutes. So let's call it quits. And I'll catch you on Monday on my international jobs group on Facebook. If you're not already a member, please join. And um, let's make a difference. This is Roz. Bye.